These next few examples all deal with functions of functions, otherwise known as functions within functions. So we're still going to use our familiar f of x, g of x, and h of x to solve for all these examples. So let's look at example 1. Example 1 asks us to use the following functions above to determine f of g of 2. So f of g of 2 is a function of f in terms of g in terms of 2. Now this might sound a bit confusing, but all we're going to do is we're going to start with our innermost function, which is g of 2. So we're going to write out g of 2, and then we're going to solve for g of 2. So we're going to apply this g of 2 in terms of g of x. So wherever we see an x in our g of x equals x squared, we're going to replace it with a 2. So we have g of 2 equals 2 squared. And then finally, g of 2 equals 2 squared, which is 4. So now we've determined what g of 2 equals. Now we can replace this at g of 2 in our original function. So now instead of f of g of 2, we have f of 4. And now that we have f of 4, we can use this function of f of x equals x plus 3 above. So wherever we see an x in f of x equals x plus 3, we're going to replace it with a 4. So we have f of 4 equals x plus 3, so 4 plus 3. And then we have f of 4 equals 4 plus 3, which is 7. So that means our total function of f of g of 2 all equals 7. Example 2 asks us to use the following functions to determine g of f of 2. So this is basically the same question except reversed. So instead of finding g of 2, we want to find the innermost function, which is f of 2. So again, we're going to write out f of 2, and now we're going to use f of x equals x plus 3. So wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with a 2. So we have f of 2 equals x plus 3, which is 2 plus 3. And then f of 2 equals 2 plus 3, which is 5. So now that we know that f of 2 equals 5, we can place it in our original function of g of f of 2. So instead of g of f of 2, we're going to have g of 5, because f of 2 equals 5. So now that we have g of 5, we're going to use our g of x equals x squared function to solve for g of 5. So wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with a 5. So we have g of 5 equals x squared, which is 5 squared. And g of 5 equals 5 squared, which is 25. So because g of 5 equals 25, that means g of f of 2 equals 25 as well. And we are done with example 2. Example 3 asks us to also use the following set of functions to determine h of f of a. So again, we're going to start with our innermost function of f of a. And then we're going to use the following function of f of x equals x plus 3. So wherever we see an x in the f of x function, we're going to replace it with the variable a. So we're going to have f of a equals x plus 3, which is a plus 3. Now that we know what f of a equals, we can plug in f of a into h of f of a. So instead of writing f of a, we're going to write a plus 3. So it looks like h of a plus 3. Now we're going to use our h function of h of x equals x minus 5 to solve for h of a plus 3. So wherever we see an x in our h of x function, we're going to replace it with an a plus 3. So we have h of a plus 3 equals x minus 5, but x is a plus 3. So we're going to have a plus 3 minus 5. And then h of a plus 3 equals a plus 3 minus 5, which is a minus 2. So that means our whole function of h of f of a all equals a minus 2. Example 4 asks us to use the following functions to determine f of h of b. So again, we want to find our innermost function of h of b. So we're going to write out h of b, and then use the following h of x equals x minus 5. But we're going to replace our x's with b's. So we're going to have h of x, h of b equals x minus 5, but replace x with b, so b minus 5. Now that we know h of b, we're going to exchange the h of b in our original function with b minus 5. So instead of f of h of b, we're going to have f of b minus 5. And now we're going to use our function of f of x equals x plus 3, but we'll replace all x's with b minus 5. 
So we're going to have f of b minus 5 equals x plus 3, but it's b minus 5 plus 3. And then we reduce it down to f of b minus 5 equals b minus 5 plus 3, which is b minus 2. So our whole function of f of h of b equals b minus 2. Our final example asks us to use the functions above to determine g of h of x plus 1. So again, we're going to start off with our innermost function of h of x plus 1. So we're going to write out h of x plus 1 and use the function of h of x equals x minus 5. But wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with an x plus 1. So we're going to have h of x plus 1 equals x plus 1 minus 5. So we have h of x plus 1 equals x plus 1 minus 5, which is x minus 4. So now that we know that h of x plus 1 equals x minus 4, we can replace x minus 4 with this function up above. So instead of g of h of x plus 1, we have g of x minus 4. And for g of x minus 4, we're going to use this function of g of x equals x squared. g of x plus 1 equals x, but in this case x is x plus 1, all squared. And then we can factor this out and we get g of x plus 1 equals x plus 1 times x plus 1. And if you use your distribution laws, you will get x squared plus 2x plus 1 as your final answer. So the whole function of g of h of x plus 1 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1.